Hi everyone, voiceover Jess here. I know that this is a different type of video, but I recently went to Japan and I really wanted to share all of these clips with you. So I just put it all on a timeline and then I'm gonna react to whatever I filmed, such as I guess my shoe here. Oh, and I'm, I'm zooming in. Very nice. <laughs> And I don't know about you, but whenever I'm at the airport, I just love looking out the window and seeing what they're doing to my plane. In this case, it kind of looks like they're taking something out. Yeah, you, good job workers, proud of you. And now we're finally taking off from the terminal. Yes, I did fly United, and I know a lot of us like to fly Asian airlines when we are going to Asia. But, you know, a girl has her points and she's got to use them with the airline that she has. And these commercials, I swear, they're getting a little bit better. Such as that like Oscar the Grouch and even like this, uh, the safety manuals or like the safety instructions that they're going over. Like why are they in the Arctic? Like it's so random. Oh, surprise, <laughs> face reveal. I was trying to get my, I, I recently got bangs and I was trying to get them underway and just like out of my face. And so you can see me here just struggle with trying to put the roller in my hair. Don't worry, I got a longer roller when I was in Japan. And at some point, the pilot told us to look outside when we were landing. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool, let me look. And it was cloudy. There's nothing to see here. Apparently, sometimes you can see like Tokyo, but not today. So we finally made it to Tokyo. We're at Shibuya Station. And before the train ride, me and my friend went to the department store that's attached to this station. And usually on B1 floors, there are a lot of different snacks and souvenirs and then bento boxes that you can buy. So me and my friend are trying to decide which bento box to buy. And they all look so good. And they're all like fairly cheap, like around 10 USD or less. We were trying to decide whether we wanted these, which is like tofu skin, and then you put rice and other stuffing inside. There's an eel box right there. And then there's a bunch of other things you can get as well. In the end, this is what I got. It was so good. It, lo it, it, lo it tasted just as good as it looked. This is what my friend got as well. So this is what the train looks like on the inside. It's not the bullet train, it's actually called the romance train. This is a completely different train. We are at Hakone and this is the local railway. And this is what a lot of tourists take to just explore Hakone and get to um, some different destinations and at different stations as well. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, I tried to take my camera out as fast as possible for this because it's the cherry blossoms. We didn't think that we, oh my God. Yeah, I'm not really good at the zoom feature, which is why you'll see me failing at that. But we actually went a little bit earlier in March and so we're missing peak cherry blossom season. So the local railway, it goes up on a zigzag. Why am I zooming up on that? I don't know. Anyways, it goes up on a zigzag and so after every zig, the train conductor has to stop and switch sides to continue on the other path to get up the mountain. So yay, uh, we finally arrived at the Hakone Open Air Museum. Cool ball cute kids. This is the entryway. And what's really cool about this open air museum is that all of the art is just out in the open. So as you're just walking through the museum grounds, you'll just come across all the different type of art. Oh yeah, and then they have a lot of these little characters around and they say stuff. It's cute. I was re- oh my god. I was really excited for this. The sunny side up benches. I needed to go there. And on this mountain, there's a symbol. So if anyone knows what it means, please let me know. And here we are, we're starting to just walk through. You can see one of those characters. Going down some steps. Oh, look, it's a, it's a guy on a dolphin. <laughs> Very cool. It rained, so you can see all those rain droplets. Um, some more art on the pond. There's my friend. Hello, Jen. And you know, we're just vibing. We're just walking, taking in all the nature. But it did rain, so you'll see that it's very damp um, and a little muddy at some times. Oh, oh, fish. Hello.
Wait, more fish? Oh my god, I forgot about them. So steamy, look at that. More art, oh, another character. You can actually go in that maze, which was pretty cool. I think this guy says, what do you want for your next birthday? This was really cool as well, but unfortunately it was closed for construction. But usually there's some like rope structure inside that kids can climb upon. And then they're also very known for this Picasso building that has some of his artwork in it, but you can't take any photos, so I just moved on. More cherry blossoms. Oh, also you can see on the left that construction. So you're just hearing, I just, I had to mute it, but you just hear banging the entire time. And this is inside, this is actually one of their more well-known structures inside. It's all stained glass and you can climb all the way up. I went all the way up, the view wasn't that great, so here's me just going down. I highly recommend you just like either go up halfway and just take some videos, or you can just take some videos at the bottom. This guy is such a mood, and he has a really nice butt, don't you think? And then I found the eggs! We did it! We found the eggs! I'm so excited that I found the eggs. There's also another character guy that you just pass by. You can also sit on this, just no shoes. And then this was supposed to be a statue of Narcissus. Here we are at our Hokone Hotel. It was very fancy, like it had this wooden thing inside. Oh, and look at our room. It's like supposed to be a traditional Japanese room. So you have your tatami mattresses there. And then look at this view. Oh my goodness. And then the star of this hotel and why we booked it is because of that. It's our personal onsen. No fee for free, which is why my friends curled up her toes. But this is the view from the onsen, your own private onsen from your balcony. And you can just look out and just see nature. And it was, it was pretty cold while we were there, but it just feels so good to have that cold air while you're inside the hot bath water. Here's another view. And then what was really nice is that they actually had this guidebook inside of your hotel room and it goes over the proper etiquette, how to actually use the hot springs, like what to do after you get out of the hot springs as well. Um, and this is actually really helpful because it gave us a lot of tips and instructions on how to exactly use it and the benefits of the hot springs. Oh, a, a monkey and a deer using the hot springs, very nice. So yeah, I, I actually read this and it was very helpful. It went over like what you should be looking out for. Um, it also told us to actually stay inside of the onsen for just 10 minutes at a time because the water stays hot. So unlike a regular bathtub where the water cools over time, the onsen water just stays hot. So there's a very good chance you might overheat. Um, so that's why they recommend you actually stay in 10 minutes at a time. And then what's also really cool is that they had a bunch of activities for you to do. So we chose the art activity. Um, so you'll see that I get to pick one of those three towels. And then look at this. Isn't this so cool? Like they had this entire art room in the lobby and basically it just had a bunch of art supplies on display and they invite artists uh, to be like their artist resident and they get to hold exhibits and like show off their art to any of the guests that stay at the hotel. So that was super cool. Here is my towel. Not as great as the previous mountain image. <laughs> And this is what it looked like when it was done. I think this took two hours, but I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. And here's dinner. Oh, I, I failed. I forgot about this. You're supposed to like swirl it so the smoke like gets into the food, but I obviously did not do that. I'll also um, add some more photos of our dinner here because there's a lot of courses and I just, I, I just could not be bothered to take videos of everything. I think this is the next morning and it actually started to snow. So that was kind of magical. I think this clip is just like peak vacation. You know, you're just enjoying the outdoors on your balcony. And then this was our Japanese full breakfast. I don't know how the Japanese people ate all of this, but they ate so, like everyone else ate everything. And me and my friend was so stuffed. 
They also came around and they cooked these yam pancakes for us, which was very nice. And I don't think they're supposed to be fully crispy. At this chain of hotels, they have a stamp for everyone. So I think it's kind of like a little surprise, little souvenir that you can have after you stay. And look at this. He's like meticulously making sure that the stamp is going to be um, pressed on correctly. And I will insert a photo of the stamp here as well. It's art based because of uh, the art room that they have. This time we're actually going to ride the bullet train up to, not up, down to Kyoto. And I didn't realize this, I don't know why I never realized this, but the bullet train is so loud. Of course it's going to be loud. It's going so fast, but you don't realize how loud it is because everyone in their, you know, in like their Instagram and their TikToks, they mute it, but it's so loud. I took a video of this guy because he was everywhere like advertising this brand. So if anyone knows who this guy is, is he like an actor? Like, please, someone please let me know. And of course, you're just traveling so fast on the bullet train. Wow, high speed trains, who would have guessed? We finally made it to Kyoto. We just stopped by a local ramen place because we could not be bothered to go travel. And then they had a vending machine to order food. And quite honestly, as a tourist, I was highly appreciative of all of the vending machines because they have photos so you know exactly what you're ordering and it tells you the price of it as well. So after you order, you get that ticket and then you pass it off to like the waiter or the chef or someone of the staff. So here we are, we're sitting at the bar. We get a pretty good view of what they're cooking. And ta-da, first meal in Kyoto. The next day, we headed up to Kiyomizu Dera, which is one of the most famous temples in Kyoto. Jet lag actually helped us a lot and we woke up at 6 a.m. And so this is us going there at 7 a.m. or like 8-ish a.m., probably closer to 7. And you can just see like, there's like not a lot of people here. Oh, <laughs> that guy in the blue, he's not doing anything weird. He has a camera. There's like a statue inside of that cage. So he is taking a photo of what's inside. At first I thought he was like part of this, you know, like the temple, but he is not. And wow, look, so empty. I love it when there's not a lot of people. And so this isn't even the entrance yet. Like we haven't paid the entrance fee to get into Kiyomizu Dera, but this is just like on the outskirts, which was really nice to just look at and like, and like experience it. And you'll see this a lot, which is where you're not supposed to drink it obviously by the sign, but instead you're supposed to use it to wash your hands before you go in. And this is everyone's wishes for the new year on dragons because it's year of the dragon. And finally, we're inside. We pay the entrance fee. They give you this really nice ticket as like a souvenir. And yeah, you just get to explore the rest of the shrine. I don't know that much about Japanese culture or the rituals that they do. So if anyone wants to educate me on that in the comments, that would be very helpful. This one I do know, it's where you pull a fortune and if you get a bad one, you like tie it onto those strings. Now this is like the main attraction, that like big temple right there on the right. And then you get a beautiful view of the city. This is what was on the ticket and we're gonna be heading there next. I appreciate this sign that says, good viewpoint soon. So you know that it's actually worth to climb all these stairs versus just being like, I wonder if these stairs are the right way to go finally made it this is like what was on that ticket and then of course like as you go down you get to see a lot of other shrines oh and this was like a group of people that was filming something i didn't know who they were but if anyone knows please let me know as well just a nice garden that was on the grounds it started raining and this is the bottom of kiyomizu dera so I, you can look up and as you can see there's still not a lot of people there and it's just beautiful I love the architecture. Oh, just, you know, just so scenic. And then there's a bunch of streets off of Kiyomizu Dera, and there's actually a very famous Starbucks, which is what I'm pointing at, which is inside one of the traditional buildings. It's very crowded and not that special, so you don't really need to go here. And this clip just makes me laugh because I, I think I took a video of it because I'm like, wow, it looks so pretty and like different architecture. But then I imagine the people who actually live here every day and the locals, they must hate it. They must be like, why are people taking a photo of my house? Like, please just leave me alone. 
We did see this at the side of the road and it was so cute. Like, look at this dog. So cute. And then this is like the picture spot. We actually saw a lot of Japanese couples doing their wedding photo shoots here. And then if you keep on walking, you get to go to Yasaka Koshindo, which is this colorful temple. All of these balls are people's wishes for the new year or like whenever they visit. And as you can see, after you write your wishes, you just pick a spot and you tie up your little ball. And there's even more in the back. So many wishes. So of course, me and my friend, we also had to get one. I don't remember what I wrote. I wrote stay healthy. I'm writing more and happy nice okay cool uh, these balls are actually not that expensive to get so i highly recommend you just stop by and do your own wish as well i remember that i had some trouble tying this up i think yeah because yeah because i realized like i did it wrong or i didn't tie it tight enough so now i'm like oh okay let me tie another knot do i tie another knot oh i guess i do it is. I added my wish to everyone else's wishes. This is just a local river that goes through Kyoto as we left. It was gloomy. It was rainy. And then for lunch, we went to Unagi Sora. Unagi is eel in Japanese, and surprise, they specialize in eel. They are very well known for their sets. They have like domestic eel, and then I think they have imported eel as well. And both are delicious. Oh my god. Doesn't it look amazing? And what I love about Japanese restaurants is that they only serve like mainly one type of dish. And they specialize in it. This is a sauce. I think they told us to only put it on the rice and not the eel. Which is why I'm avoiding the eel. But I think you can just do either. I don't know how mukbangers or streamers eat because it was so hard to like stay in frame and eat at the same time. Okay, yeah, I'm happy about it. It was so good. Afterwards, we walked around the local markets. I guess this is so cool. How come America doesn't have anything like this? Oh yeah, because we don't have walkable cities. We stopped by Co Donuts for a quick snack. They are pretty well known for some of their donuts. I will put in some photos from uh, their Instagram here and what we got as well. This is their newest donut. Yeah, it's like pizza donuts. How bizarre. Th that's not pizza. Oh, and it's really cool because you can actually see them um, like assemble all of their donuts from the seating area and they all wear lab coats. And so it kind of gave off a very like a laboratory, very sciencey theme, but in reality they're just, you know, constructing donuts. It was strawberry season in Japan, so a lot of the foods actually involve strawberries, which I mean, I love strawberries, so that was great, but it was an excessive amount of strawberries. Here is like a random gachapon store that we came across. There's a lot of these Gachapon is basically blind boxes, but instead of a box, you put you get them through a capsule. And so you can see there's so many- I was overwhelmed. There's so many cute things here, and I kind of wanted all of them like that. Like, what the heck is that? It's just a ghost. A happy ghost. I think this is Doraemon. There's just so many. There's something for everyone. There's stuff like anime for people who are into that. There's like cute character mascots. Oh, there's Pokemon, obviously. And then in the end, I settled on this one, which are derpy animals. I really wanted the derpy ones. Um, so here you are. It's, and of course, it just had to be close to the ground. Inserting the coins. Oh, one of the coins didn't go in. <laughs> so this one was about 300 yen, which is approximately equivalent to $2 USD at this time with the USD to yen ratio. Okay, here we go. Time to open this up. And not gonna lie, this is four times sped up. It was impossible to open this. Like, I'm still going. We finally got it open. I forgot what animal I got. Oh, it's a hedgehog. I, I think. Yeah, 